Grace and peace be multiplied to all the saints of God. It's 1230 California time and it's uh, get ready to have our midday manner again. Once again, we thank God for everybody that's coming in, that will come in, that will view this broadcast. I pray that God will bless you. Good to see you, uh, um, missionary Joshua. Um, we're going to have a good teaching today. Got somebody local, got one of my sons that's going to teach today, Prophet Christopher Brown. Amen. He should be on in a few minutes. But can you hear me all right? I want to make sure y'all can hear me. Amen. Bless you, uh, um, Mr. Hale, Jermaine Hale, man. Bless you, man. Uh, so good to see y'all again. Another week. Amen. It feels a nice day out here. Hope your day is going well. Hope your week is going well. Hope all is well with you. Hey, man, do me a favor like I've been doing all month. This is Clergy Appreciation Month. Uh, Preacher Dale, good to see you, man. This is Clergy Appreciation Month. Uh, do me a favor. If you ain't too mean, if you can, shout out to church and your leader. Let them know, hey, man, you appreciate them, you love them. Hey, man, put it in the comments so we can know what you're tuning in for. Let us know. If you ain't in California, let me know where you're tuning in from. Hey, man, we're waiting on... Um, our guest to come on, and then once he comes on, we're going to allow him to uh, go as the Lord leads him. Uh, we are dealing with honor and the fear of the Lord on this um, this month, October, this 10th month. This is the month of harvest. We understand that those of us that are uh, connected um, spiritually, amen, that, that like to be in tune with uh, the seasons that we are in. And we are actually in the new year, hey, 5785, I think it is. Amen. Praise the Lord. Is that uh, okay? Uh, is that Elder Manor? Brittany Michelle, is that Elder Manor? Good to see you, Elder Manor. Okay, you here? Uh, you should be able to come on. You should be able to come on. Let me see. Let me see if I can add you. I did it all. I did it beforehand. So let me see if I can bring you on. Uh, All right, all right. It should it should send you a request. Let me know when you see it. Ain't Dorothy May, hey, my my auntie on here. Bless you, ain't Dorothy May. Hey, man, good to see you. Okay, there he is. Bless you, hey, Prophet. How you doing? I'm good. How are you, I'm Apostle? Good. I'm good. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay. Can y'all hear him all right? Somebody, let me know if y'all can hear it. Uh, Prophet Chris, say something else, Prophet. Hello, everyone. Hey, Sister Cox. Good to see you. Um, Good to see you. I think we I think we can hear you all right. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, amen. We're going to give them a few more minutes to come in. Y'all, please do me a favor. Thank you. Please do me a favor if you can. Would you Would you all share this? Amen. Would you all share this? I'm good, auntie. I'm good. I'm good. Bless you, uh, sis, uh, Miss, Miss uh, Tawana Cox. Uh, I'm good. Can y'all share this? Uh, I hope we're sharing it. Pastor Brown, good to see you. She's one of the pastors at our church. Good to see you. I love you so much, Pastor Brown. I honor you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Prophet, I love you, man. I honor you, man. I appreciate you for taking your time out, man, to be on this with me on today. We're talking about honor and the fear of the Lord. We're going to give them like two more minutes. Amen. Can we share this? Um, I don't know if Pastor Robinson is on or Missionary Dominique or somebody that has the capabilities. Can we share this from our church platform as well? Amen. I want everybody to hear from this man of God. He is a prophet in the Lord's church. He is an anointed man of God. He's faithful to the ministry. We love and appreciate everything that he does for the ministry. He has a servant's heart. Amen. He has a teachable spirit. And he also, amen, has the Holy Ghost and is a great revelator of the word. And he's going to talk to us today, probably in the next minute or so, about honor and the fear of the Lord, whatever God has given them. And however, amen, love you so much. And however the Lord leads them to flow and go. He he know he know he he know what to do. Amen. Amen. He look he look uh he looks small now, but when he opened his mouth, amen. Y'all gonna hear. Amen. Hear the power of God that come out of his mouth. So we're gonna give you another minute. Amen. Y'all do me a favor. If you're still coming in, bless you, Prophet Josh. Amen. Elder Josh. Y'all do me a favor as y'all coming in, man. Shout out your church. Shout out your pastor. Shout out your leader. This October is pastors. Amen. Preacher uh Corey Kennedy, bless you, man. This is uh clergy appreciation month. Every person that that functions in in the church in any aspect, every bishop, every apostle, every prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, prophetess, amen. I appreciate you and I honor you. 
amen, for the word's sake, amen, praise the Lord. And I thank God that, that you gave up your life to talk about his life. So we appreciate you so much, amen, praise the Lord. So at this time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step back and prophet, man, you got it, man. To tell us, give us what the Lord has given you, amen. We're in your hands, man, and let, let the Lord use you, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, firstly, I can't talk about honor without obviously honoring God, but you. <laughs> Love you, man. I appreciate um, this so much. Yeah, you're, uh, this is my leader. <laughs> and so to be allowed on your, uh, on your platform to be able to share anything is to be honored in that way. I honor you. And so hey, man, I, I love you, man. I appreciate that. you. I love you too. Um, and so, um, I'm going to jump into the text. I, one of the texts I've, I've kind of taught on it before we've been talking about honor, obviously at our church, um, is in first Samuel chapter three. Okay. And, um, and so I'm going to jump there. I'm going to read there. I have some other scriptures, but we'll see how, how it goes. Um, but 1 Samuel chapter uh, 3, verse 1, it says, Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time, while Eli was lying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim, that he could not see. And before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel. And he answered, here I am. So hallelujah. So he ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. Hallelujah. And he said, I did not call, lie down. And again, he went and lay down. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. He answered, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, you, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. You, and the Lord called Samuel again the third time. So he rose and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you did call me. Hallelujah. Then Eli perceived that the Lord called the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down and it shall be if he calls you that you must say, speak, Lord, for, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Just stopping there for a moment. Uh, the Lord, I was meditating on honor. I've been meditating, obviously, all this month on honor. Um, and on the fear of the Lord. And when I think about this scripture, how Samuel, who is found laying by the ark, who is mm -hmm. found in the presence of God, how he was given, lent to the Lord, given to the Lord uh, uh, by Hannah, uh, who we'll also talk about a little bit, uh, but was lent to the Lord, given to the Lord, is serving the Lord, serving in the house of Lord in this position of honor. And I think that so often we look at all of the the glamour and all the things, how ways we want to be honored. But this young man, this child was literally serving in an honorable position that we probably would look at as, as not an honorable position. He was serving in the house of the, the house of the Lord, excuse me the house of the Lord, and he, um, he was in a servant's position. He served as a son under Eli. Eli, who we know, Eli was uh -huh. off. <laughs> Eli, <laughs> Eli was not in place. He was allowing his sons to run rampant and do all of these things. And Samuel found no excuse. I believe that Samuel probably didn't even, didn't even realize what was going on. Absolutely. I believe that Samuel was so much in, the, in a position of servanthood, of serving and sitting as a son in submission to Eli, that he didn't even know all the things that was going on. He continued to see his leader right. One of the things that I have noticed and the Lord's been teaching me and showing me, even in this time we've been talking about the fear of the Lord and talking about honoring the Lord and how um, and even something you said, which is such an honor to have your leader say that you have a teachable spirit, <laughs> um, is that to know that um, is that is it having that teachable spirit, having a teachable spirit, a spirit that is able to receive wisdom, to be able to become and raised up. It says later on in scripture that Samuel, he grew in stature before the Lord. He grew before the Lord. The Lord honored him because he had an honorable spirit. He allowed himself to sit under sound leadership, sound teaching, even though Eli, God still entrusted Samuel to the charge of Eli, even though Eli was off. Uh -huh. God was God knew that he was sufficient enough to still give Samuel what he needed, even though Eli was off. Uh -huh. 
even though he was going to judge Eli. And so you see like in the scripture that God gives us no excuse, no option, no leeway, leeway or loophole out of honor. Mm -hmm. And so you see so many people in the church who are struggling, and I once did, struggling with the idea, the concept of honor. But you see in scripture here that we have this great example uh, of someone who is is uh, a drastic example, a great example where you see someone who is so off Eli, who has not kept his sons in line, and God is going to is going to judge him. But you see that honor is still given, mm -hmm. that his words were still honored, that God still expected Samuel to honor. And even when when the Lord is speaking, which we see um, coming up in this text, verse ten, where it says, "Now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel," and Samuel answered speak for your servant hears. Verse 11 says, then the Lord said to Samuel, behold, I will do something in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. In that day, I will perform against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end, for I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows because his sons made themselves vile and did not restrain them. He did not restrain them. And therefore I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. So Samuel lay down until morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel was afraid to tell Eli the vision. Mm -hmm. I, I know I keep, keep on pointing this out, but it's important to the point that Eli was in this position where he was off, where his eyes were growing dim. There was no widespread revelation that was going forth. But even in the midst of this, you see how Samuel feared even to share with, Sam, mm -hmm. share with Eli what the Lord had shared with him. Uh, Samuel still found a way, even after hearing this word, because he had an honorable spirit to honor his leader, mm -hmm. to honor whom he was set as a son under. And, and, um, and I believe that this, this, a lot of things are in a component in this. One is that it's not hard to be honorable when you have first humbled yourself. Mm -hmm. When Samuel, who has been given to the charge of Eli, who has humbled himself under the leadership of Eli and, and has kept a right view of Eli. And then you also see how, how Samuel, even after receiving this Lord, receiving this word, you'll find that in this same text, he gets up and goes back to the same thing that he was doing. Mm -hmm. He gets back, he opens was the door to the house of the Lord. He's still serving under Eli, even though he no, now knows that, that the Lord is going to judge Eli. And so uh, continuing in the text, it says, uh, shall not be atoned for offering forever. So Samuel laid down until morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel was afraid to tell the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He answered, here I am. And he said, what is is the word that the Lord spoke to you. Please do not hide it from me. God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all the things that he said to you. Then Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. So Samuel grew and the, uh, grew and the Lord with him. And the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. None of his words. Because Samuel was honorable, none of his words fell to the ground. Uh, there's something that the Lord's been showing me even in regards to honor, even in regards to having a teachable spirit and, and fearing the Lord and, uh, uh, and how uh, something that we talked about so often in our church, uh, which is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, where it talks about being transformed from glory to glory. Mm -hmm. I, I think that oftentimes we want to be honored without first going through the process of becoming honorable. Hallelujah. And so which is the process of allowing God, beholding him, and allowing him to transform you. But we see that even in this example with Samuel, that the only way that Samuel was able to get to this place was to be submitted and to honor. Mm -hmm. And so his honorable spirit, his teachable spirit, which, which he was able to receive the wisdom that Eli had, the, uh, he did not know. It says in scripture, it says that he did not yet know the Lord. He, the only way that he was able to come to the Lord was through honor. Mm -hmm. He had to honor Samuel, and through his honoring Samuel, he was able to be in a position to be able to hear from the Lord the assignment, the call that the Lord had for him without honor, without honoring the men and women of God that have come before. Somebody knows more about God than me. 
and I'm a whole shot. Somebody knows more about God than you. Somebody mm -hmm. has been in this longer. If you don't honor who has come before you, you can never get to the place that God has called oh, you to be. And so, so many of us, we're trying to attain a certain place and get to a certain place of ascension and grow to certain levels, all without having been submitted to anybody, oh, yes. without sitting under somebody, finding excuses and ways and reasons, all of these things to get out from under somebody. We want to get out from under and go and do whatever we want to do and say, and all in the name of the Lord, all while being dishonorable. Not oh, yes. somebody has to be able to teach you how to be honorable. It, oh, yes. I think that's uh, why it's so fitting that even in this opportunity why I started with the fact that I honor you my leader because without you someone who has gone first someone who has been taught who has been taught honor without that I cannot grow into the full measure of what I've been called and assigned to do my assignment is contingent upon me being honorable about mm -hmm. upon me being transformed upon me being teachable i have to have a teachable and understanding wise heart we talk about wisdom people uh, uh many people when they think of wisdom they just think of the the understanding the knowledge uh they often think are really uh the association with the worldly wisdom of this world but but true wisdom to be wise to have an understanding heart when we look uh, uh throughout scripture and proverbs when it talks about wisdom that true a wise man that that receives instruction a correction that wise man is one who has a teachable spirit hallelujah we're always in a position of learning it's something that as sitting under you chief apostle sitting under you that i've learned is that how how you're teaching us but you still remain teachable how how the lord is still teaching you and at no point do you come out of the place of humility hallelujah i've never seen you come out of the position the posture you uh, to watch you being so clothed in humility that example to where i'm able to follow in that likeness to follow by that example to be clothed in humility to be able to be low enough to be teachable that the Lord is able as he grows me I'm so clothed in humility that I never get to any place of ascension any place in my growth to where I cannot be taught I cannot Hallelujah. be submitted Samuel receives this word from directly from the mouth of God but yet was able to wake up the next day and open the door and serve uh -huh. and serve the same man that God said he's going to declare judgment over this this great example uh -huh. that we are given that the Bible gives us how testifying there's no there's no nowhere that you will find in the Bible that excuses you from being submitted from being honorable from being humble hallelujah hallelujah you need somebody everyone wants to begin with the topic uh, of talking about honoring the man of God when we talk about honor uh, uh, we cannot honor the man of God without first honoring God without having a fear for God it starts mm -hmm. all wisdom it is wise for me to honor you it is wisdom. I can't receive that wisdom hallelujah that that's going to benefit my soul my growth my maturation I cannot receive that wisdom without first fearing mm -hmm. the Lord the beginning mm -hmm of all wisdom of all understanding Hallelujah. starts with my fear of the lord if i fear him i will honor men because god honors them he made them i was thinking about meditating on the scripture how how god he and i remember you teaching i think on the first uh i think when you actually were talking about consecration how the lord has consecrated us unto him he he has given us a honor even man a glory he everything that he has ordained he has honored from the sun to the stars he has given an honor we actually have to respect the sunlight that comes every day because it's still honoring what god said mm -hmm. hallelujah the wisdom of god that formed everything that put everything Thing, the foundations of the very earth uh, everything was formed by the wisdom of God wisdom is calling out of us saying honor mm -hmm. uh, uh, sit with me dine with me uh, uh, be instructed by me the wisdom of God the fear of God that has you to be in a position where you are teachable mm -hmm. and if I'm teachable then I can be made honorable. And if I'm honorable, yes, then men will will see and recognize the truth and the light of God that is being reflected through me because I look like God. It is honorable, first and foremost, to look like Jesus. Uh -huh. It is honorable to look like God. He uh -huh. is the greatest, the, the greatest thing. That's why Paul says, imitate me as I imitate him. As I'm following uh -huh. him, I'm looking more like Jesus. And as you follow me, you will that that honor. The, the greatest way I believe that a person can honor my God and I even honor me is if if I'm following God, then they follow my example. Hallelujah. I, I believe that I'm honoring you as the as my leader, as as a chief apostle more than 
just with my words, but with my life. So that as I am imitating your life, as I'm imitating you, as you're imitating Christ, I'm honoring, I expect, I remember you saying this, I was listening and you were saying um, that, that 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 uh, 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 about that honor and how 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 it is uh, uh, it is a privilege to be able to be honored how 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 many are expecting uh, expecting honor and accolades and all of this recognition but it is a privilege to be honored because they're expecting that something at, that God is saying is going to come out of my mouth uh -huh. I, I, mm -hmm. I honor it benefits me to honor you because I expect that as my man of God as the voice that speaks to me that the most shot that something from God is going to come out of your mouth. I'm going to honor you because you are a vessel of honor. You're out of my shit. I can receive and it's if I'm going to be a vessel of honor, then I have to be in a position to receive of your poor. And so Hallelujah. So, uh, so in this scripture, we're, we're, we're seeing how Samuel found no excuse, no reason to dishonor. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in this extreme example that the Bible gives us for our teaching, for our learning. There's no reason not to honor. Hallelujah. In this same, uh, in this same book, going uh, uh, back in time a little bit before we get to Samuel, uh, uh, going to Hannah, Hannah, who, who is in this uh, situation where she is being vexed by Penina, Hannah, who uh, who has allowed, with, though she's supposed to be coming to honor God and coming to worship God, hallelujah, and she has this honorable man that I really believe represents Elkanah, represents God, who loves her, who has favored her, who has consecrated, uh, uh, God who has consecrated her womb, and, and, and so uh, he has favored her. She's in this position of favor, but does not honor it. Uh -huh. And, and and she's in this position. She's about to birth forth Samuel, but does not fully realize it. Cannot see the position that God has consecrated her womb so that she can give birth to something that is needed in the land. And so God really has honored her in such a way as to consecrate her. And, and so uh, we see her uh, in this text. She has allowed herself to get to a point of bitterness of soul. She's allowed herself. Uh, and this is really something, uh, all of that was just a precursor to this, uh, uh, this point, something that the Lord was talking to me about is, is, is the bitterness that we allow to creep in mm -hmm. that keeps us from being in a position of honor. Unfortunately, we have allowed our soul, uh, uh, our soul, our carnality, uh, uh, and uh, uh, joined up with the enemy. And, and the enemy, we have allowed the enemy to creep in even as soon as our households, our homes, our families, our marriages, in our households, with our, in our relationships with our children, to creep in and has done such a great job of causing us to dishonor first in the home. Mm -hmm. to the point to where we cannot honor leadership in church mm -hmm. and, and we cannot honor the man of God. And, and so he's talking to me about how there's this bitterness that because of our experience and because of all of the things that we have encountered, whether it be in our homes and our families with men, uh, 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 specifically on my heart uh, uh, for this topic today, uh, uh, has been the men of God mm -hmm. who don't want to submit to fathers. <laughs> And, and and I believe that it, it starts, it, it, the enemy has done, and like I said, our soul, uh, our experience has done such a good job of causing us to have a wrong and bitter view of the men in our lives, our fathers, our natural fathers, to come to the extent that we are unable to honor and receive of the men and women of God in our lives. But second particularly the men of God in our lives. We're not able to truly stay in the posture of, of humility and be sons and be poured into because of the bitterness that we have allowed to creep in. So Hannah, this example that most people would use to just talk about women, but I believe this is a fitting example uh, for all of us who, where we have allowed the bitterness of our experience and allowed our soul to become bitter to where we are unable to receive. I believe that not only is, are we seeing that, that her womb was closed by the Lord, but we're also seeing that she was unable to receive seed because her vessel was bitter. Mm -hmm. Her soul was bitter. She was not fertile ground. She was not uh, uh, in this time that was preventing her from being the honorable vessel that God wanted to use for Samuel to be brought into the earth. Mm -hmm. And so...
we have her, she's found in this text in bitterness of soul and she's praying to the Lord and weeping in anguish and she, uh, 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 she has allowed herself to be vexed by this woman but we find out that this woman is not the problem. Mm -hmm. her, her disposition is the problem. Mm -hmm. The fact that she is unable to honor this man who has favored her, who really is representing God because every time they're coming uh, to this place, she's coming with her husband every year at the same time to worship God we find that she is unable to see this man, her husband, right, because she is not seeing God right. And she thinks that God has done something oh, wrong to her oh, and kept hallelujah. her from giving birth. But really, God has come. She's not seeing God right. And because she does not see God right, she is not in a position to give birth to what God has called her to give birth to. She can't even see that, Naboshad, that she's not being afflicted. She's being positioned to give birth. She can't even walk in the fullness of what God has called her to because she's so concerned with what she thinks God has withheld from her, that she cannot see that God has held something for her, mm -hmm. that God has favored, that God has given her a double portion. And so when we allow that bitterness, that bitterness of soul to seep in, that bitterness to contaminate our womb, to contaminate our hearts, we are not in a position, an honorable position to be able to receive of that seed, to receive what the Lord has for us to walk into. So we find her, she's in bitterness, she's in anguish of soul because she thinks the Lord has done her wrong. Mm. Hallelujah. And so she thinks that she's being afflicted, but really she has been preserved because God has such a call on her life. And so she gets to this position where she doesn't even, she refuses to eat, though she's been given a double portion. Mm -hmm. She refuses, hallelujah, even on that, she refuses to take of the double portion, the food that God has given. Hold on, my When I count you, chief apostle, as honorable, I respect what comes out of your mouth. I'm able to eat from you. I'm able to eat what you have. Now, that that is going to position me to be able to receive and to do what God has commissioned me to do. She's weak right now because she has not been hearing Elkanah. She has not been hearing that God has favored her. She's not listening to him at the table right now, Masha, as he tells her, I, why are you vexed? Why are you in anguish when I have favored you? When I, hallelujah, when I have favored you, I've given you a double portion. You're looking at this woman. You're looking at this situation. You're looking at this disposition, but I have favored you. God has favored you, favored you so to give you me, hallelujah. to give you a man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, hallelujah. What, what bitterness will do is have you looking at the man or woman of God. Hallelujah. No one has to tell you to honor when you realize that, that this has been given to me so that it can be poured into me. Oh. So that the word that is in you, the word that is in my chief apostle, hallelujah, is from God to build me up so that I can do, so I can run, so I can walk. So I, hallelujah, the word hallelujah. that I I receive from my leader it is nourishment unto my soul she got into the bitterness of soul because she was not receiving what Elkanah had said she was not receiving the word that he had in him hallelujah to speak unto her and tell her I favored you you're favored you have an assignment on your life you can't just give birth to anything I have something that I know she there's something which you receive what I'm telling you receive what I've spoken over you I there is something that the Lord is about to birth out of you. You oh, can't do it without honor. You cannot, if you don't honor, God has positioned, he's given, he has honored, he has given. Uh, Ephesians chapter four, all of those graces, all of those gifts, those are gifts, people, people who are given for the edification of the body. You will never grow to where you are meant to be without being honorable. Oh, Samuel would have never been the prophet that we know him to be today. Hallelujah. He would not have been able to grow in stature if he did not stay submitted under Eli, though even Eli was off. Hallelujah. So we have Thank to be you, honorable. Hallelujah. The way that I become honorable is I honor who God has sent. I use wisdom. I, I submit myself to the wisdom of God. God in his wisdom, he ordained there to be apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, all of evangelists, all of these things for the upbuilding of the body. It is befitting. Hallelujah. That you give honor to these positions because they're honorable positions. Hallelujah. Samuel, uh, Eli's position was honored. And you see that even in this text, when finally Hannah got to the uh, to the end of herself and poured out all of that bitterness of soul, poured out all of that, Eli is standing there and sees this woman wrong. Mm -hmm. 
sees her wrong. He, uh, he, he, he thinks that the Bohosha, he, uh, she said, P please don't think that I, that I am one of these daughters of Belial. Please don't think that he sees her wrong, but the but when she honored his position, when she honored, hallelujah, that the Lord had still set him there and the Lord had not removed him from that place yet. One of us, she was finally able to see right because she was finally made an honorable fitting vessel, able to receive seed, receive word and how do I know hallelujah when she poured all of that out Eli was able to speak somebody off was able to mm -hmm. speak hallelujah hallelujah and Moshe, and she heard God through it no matter what I don't care what we see what excuse you think you have hallelujah there is no excuse for dishonor and when you dishonor you really are hurting yourself mm -hmm. if she wouldn't have poured out that bitterness if she wouldn't have poured out all of that before God emptied herself of it she wouldn't have been in the position to be able to receive that word that word hallelujah she, he said whatever hallelujah whatever you have requested it be so unto you and she left that place and she was able to go back to her husband with a whole new disposition an honorable posture a teachable spirit she received that word hallelujah and went back to her husband and now she was able to receive seed and what it says in the text is so good to me is that God remembered her she went uh -huh. and laid with her husband and God remembered her how I understood that now in the text is that is that when God remembered her he regarded her her. He respected uh -huh. her. This is the understanding behind honor. God honored her. She honored, hallelujah. She finally came to a point to where she allowed nothing to affect her disposition, her posture. She finally emptied herself out of all that bitterness. And now God was able to honor her regard her respect her he remembered her hallelujah and she was able to birth forth what god had ordained for her to birth out because god remembered god remembered her hallelujah 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 here hallelujah when she finally was able to receive she finally was able to receive the truth the word that elkanah had been speaking all along she was able to receive of that man of god and i love Osha, and i'm also told and one of the most and important things that I believe that the Lord said to me, even even regards, excuse me, to this teaching, is that Abohosha, we have been failing because of bitterness. We have been failing to receive the man of God. Hallelujah! I, I, I include the women of God in that too, but specifically, God put on my heart the men of God. Hallelujah! Those who have been put in a position of covering, those who have been put in position to be able to pour. Hallelujah! Specifically, even the men of God that 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 God you has commissioned you called you hallelujah as a young man in the faith as a as a person growing in ministry he has called you hallelujah to submit to your man of God hallelujah to submit to fear God enough to submit to wisdom to be wise to have a wise and understanding heart to be able Thank to sit God. under and be poured into and not allow the bitterness of your experience to keep you from receiving what you need to be hallelujah. who you are Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's too many of us, hallelujah, who are trying to be who we're called to be without being poured into, mm -hmm. to be who, to be honorable vessels. Timothy, this great example that hallelujah, uh, Paul was teaching him about being an honorable vessel. Paul was teaching him, nurturing him, building him up. He was a son in the faith. Timothy could not be who he was supposed to be without Paul. Paul, what am I, Han Shimi Hosa? Paul had to, had to nurture him, had to mature, had, had to teach him and disciple him into being the leader that he was called to be. Paul was able to trust Timothy. Paul, even so far as to when I have no one else like-minded enough to leave with his people. He, in other words, he's saying that, Paul, that Timothy has sat with me long enough, sat under me, hallelujah, long enough to get my spirit. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. No, no, Abashe. We don't want to hear this in Anamosha in this time, but we have the Bosha, but there is is a certain uh, yeah, to have a teachable spirit you, I need to be able to lead hallelujah effectually there's somebody who has to teach me there's somebody who has to pour into me hallelujah I need the spirit of my leader hallelujah hallelujah I'm those sure. uh, all of those elders that were that sat under Moses hallelujah Moses this great prophet of God but in order for them to function as leaders under him they had to have his spirit they had to honor him hallelujah hallelujah the Lord put up of uh, the spirit of God that was on Moses upon those leaders. Hallelujah. You will never be able to lead the way that God has ordained you to be. Hallelujah. Without mm. honoring.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is necessary. It is needed. Hallelujah. It is wise. Hallelujah. For you to be honorable. I want to be an honorable vessel. I want to grow and to mature into everything that God has called me to be. I want to be the fullness of the prophet that God has called me to be. I want to be the fullness of the son that he has called me to be. Hallelujah. If I want to do that, then I have no problem humbling myself. And yes, I'm going to learn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How can I learn? Hallelujah. When I look at the example in scripture, when I look at how uh, 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 Elisha sat under Elijah and how he simply served him, he served him. Hallelujah. I, I think that we fail to understand that the positions that we have, if I'm a prophet of God, that position is honorable. Uh -huh. I serve that office. I serve that position. How do I learn? How can I truly serve the position, the, the honorable position and call and office of the prophet if I don't first learn how to serve? Elisha was able to get a double portion of what was on Elijah because he learned how to serve. He served that office. He served that man of God and it taught him how to honor the office. It taught him how to serve the office. It taught him how to serve God rightly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and what you find is that when these examples that we have in scripture of Elisha, this example, hallelujah, that he was not so quick that even when Elijah was going to be taken up, hallelujah, he was not, uh, when, they, when they tried to mock him and say that his father was going to be leaving, he was not so quick to try to get up from under. We're too quick trying to get up from under a covering and get up from under a poor, hallelujah, and have not received. He wanted to get everything that he loved his leader. He honored his leader. Hallelujah. And he wanted to get everything that he needed to get from his leader. Hallelujah. He was not going to be able to walk in that double portion. He had to walk with Elijah Hannibal Shah until Elijah was taken up. He had to walk with him every step of the way. He said, the only way that you're going to get this double portion is if you are with me when I'm taken up. Hallelujah. You and Masha, we are too quick to try to get up from under accountability, to get up under from under manhood, uh -huh. to get up from under hallelujah i can not even just hallelujah not even just as a prophet but as a man i have to be able to sit under a man hallelujah there are things that i have not yet hallelujah that i was not able to learn about being a man i'm the whole shot not just a prophet a man with a motion until i was able to sit under your leadership you have been teaching me how to be a man of god not just a prophet of god but a man of god i need the poor i need to honor the vessel you're an honorable, you're an honorable vessel so hallelujah, that is teaching me how to be one too. Hallelujah. And I can't be the leader, the honorable vessel that I'm called to be without being poured into Elijah. Elisha, he walked with Elijah all the way. You're, we look around and there's so many people who they're so quick to try to get up under. They have one spiritual father after another spiritual father and, and moving from house to house, from ministry to ministry. Hallelujah. And, and, and wondering why. Hallelujah. So many of us, even uh, uh, our leader, our chief apostle, he, he, he's been teaching us about being an emotionally healthy church. How can I be an emotionally healthy leader? I need, this is why I talked about, even in our houses as children, the emotion, we have allowed the enemy to creep in and keep us from getting what we need from our fathers. We need our fathers. We need to honor our fathers. It will be well with you when you honor Yerushal. You, you, it will extend your days if you honor your fathers, your mothers, your parents, Yerushal, and not just your natural ones, but in the Lord. It will be, it will benefit you. It will extend your days. Hallelujah. As a man, extend my days. Hallelujah. I believe that, hallelujah, that the ministry that the Lord has called me to do, whatever extent it is, it shall be extended and prosper and prevail. Hallelujah. Not just because I have noble Hosha, I'll be such a great man of God, but I will be such a great man of God. Hallelujah. I will, I will reach the extent of what God has called me to, and he will extend even the days of that ministry. Hallelujah. Because of my submission to you, because of my honor you. Hallelujah. So, so we, ha it is so important that we learn that even through this example of Hannah, how she poured out everything, she poured out the bitterness, whatever your experience, it does not excuse you from the truth of scripture. Uh -huh. Whatever you 
you have witnessed, whatever you have gone through, whatever, whoever you think has hurt you, whether it's a leader, whatever it is, it does not excuse you to be able to walk in bitterness. Hallelujah. It does not excuse you to be able to walk in bitterness of soul. Hallelujah. But you submit to the word. Hallelujah. We have, hallelujah. I gave you uh, 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 these, these, these great examples. One, of a leader, Eli, who, who was off, still no excuse to dishonor. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And Samuel grew into what he was supposed to be because he honored. Hallelujah. But then you have this great example the, uh, 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 of Elijah, who, 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 who we all, well, everybody wants to be Elijah, although none of us can be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But everyone wants to be Elijah and Elisha and walk in all of these things. But we see this great example of how, 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 it's, Elisha had to be submitted under him and submitted to the poor. You have to be submitted. You honor, hallelujah. You will never honor anyone who you don't respect and who you don't see rightly. Hallelujah. Hannah had to see God right. Hannah had to see Elkanah right. Mm -hmm. She was unable to receive of that seed, to receive of his of the word, hallelujah, because she was not seeing him mm -hmm. right. Hallelujah. She allowed her situation and what she thought was affliction to keep her from seeing God right. And so you see that after she poured all of that out, she was able to return to worship. She was able to return back to Elkanah and receive seed. Hallelujah. And when she received it, she gave birth to what God had ordained for her the whole time. Hallelujah. So we cannot neglect. I, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about foundations and how we've got so far away. I want to be as, as a prophet of God, as a man of God, as a saint, as a believer. I, it's so important to me as something I think about often um, is to be foundational. Uh -huh. And honor is a foundational thing. I never want to move away from the foundation. And I believe many of us do is uh, do because we do not get foundational principles like honor. If yeah. I don't learn, and, and it's the same thing going back to our households, our families, and, and our fathers, and our mothers and, and submitting there if there's we we learn those foundational principles you teach a child in the way that they shall go and they shall not depart from it we need these foundational principles like honor so that we can be grounded so we're not easily moved and we see so many people who are easily moved and and and, and these words even as a as a prophet all of these things these words that are being declared uh, 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 over nations and over regions that are completely off and are not foundational and it's all because we don't honor. If uh -huh. I simply, as a prophet of God, if I simply would just honor the word of God and fear God enough to recognize that he put first apostles uh -huh. and that if I'm submitted in the order of God, that I'll be able to flow in my function and I won't be giving these off prophecies to the nations because I'm foundational. Uh -huh. And so we need the basic foundations of honor. We have to empty ourselves out of our experience of the bitterness that we took on that was our fault. Mm -hmm. it, the Hamashiach, that, that Hannah took on that bitterness. Hannah allowed that. Uh, Elkanah was speaking the right thing to her. Hallelujah. She had a man of God in her life, her husband, hallelujah, her covering, who was who had spoke the right thing unto her. And she, instead of receiving it, she received bitterness. Mm -hmm. So now, hallelujah, if you are one of those who have received, unfortunately received, allowed yourself to receive that bitterness, hallelujah, now is the time to pour it out. Mm -hmm. is to pour out all of those things that have kept you from being able to see God right, from being able to see your man of God right, from being able to be an, uh, made into an honorable vessel so that you can be the leader that you've been called to be. Uh, uh, just one last thing that the Lord, even as we've been speaking about honor, one thing is that we often are looking, when we talk about honor, we look, about how, uh, look at how honor it, uh, should be given to a leader. Mm. Hallelujah. And it is so. It's words. It's, it's the word. It's scripture. Hallelujah. But one thing that's been on my heart the most has been how God is honorable. Mm -hmm. And then also how those who represent God should be honorable. The positions Come of God on. are honorable. The position of the prophet, of the pastor, of the apostle, all of these things, the evangelist, they are honorable positions. I need to allow God. I need to submit to the poor. I need to allow God to make me an honorable vessel so that I can fit to the position, hallelujah, that God has called me to, the honorable position that God has called me to. Hallelujah.
that's all that I really have to share with you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We we thank God for for the word of God that came out of your mouth, Prophet. Amen. Truly an old time word. I don't know if you can see the comments, but they lighten it up with hearts and, <laughs> and all kinds of comments. We appreciate you. And one of the things that I kind of really, we got 15 minutes, we can kind of dialogue. One of the things that I really appreciate uh, that you said, and one of the things that I think that we have neglected to honor, I think that we as the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, bishops, whoever we are, I, I think that we have failed to honor the body, mm. to honor the, the body of Christ is God's wife. It's not ours. And I think that if we will embody the spirit of honor for God, then we will honor his wife. I don't, yes. I don't know. A, I don't know a man that loves his wife. Yes. That's going to let you talk any kind of way yes. to his wife and God loves his church yes. and he loves his bride. Now we 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 can say, oh, the church got problems, issues. We really don't. We're, we're growing and we're maturing. The Book of Jude says that we have spots in our love feast, which He's going to clean and wash the bride through yes. the washing of the water of the Word. But what I what I do understand is that God loves His church, yes. and I believe that a lot of us leaders, thank you, Father, we need to be healed yes. and we need to be delivered from. Um, our wrong, thank you, Father, our yes. wrong expectations of ministry that yes. have made us angry at God's wife. Yes. We, we, the, the wrong expectation. Yes. Um, even in the text where you were talking about her, her, God had to fix her expectation. Yes. She yes. got, she got so caught up in expecting a child that she yes. was not in love with her husband. Yes. And, and because yes. she missed, she missed the blessing check this out her expectation may almost made her miss miss the instrument yes how do you, Lord. you want hallelujah to god how do you yes. want seed from me but you're trying to look past me when yes. what you want is going to come out of me yes. and what i thank you Lord. father yes. and what's going on in the body of christ is yes. is that we we are we are we our expectation has caused us to lose focus he is the he he is the lover. He should be our affection. He should yeah. be. He did he did he not say to a prophet, yeah. man, I'm better than you. Yes, I'm I'm better than you than anything that I've yeah. given her. Yeah. Anything that I'm still I'm better to you than what came out of me that yeah. she now has. Yeah. So I think that one of the things, and I appreciate you so much. I think that I think that there needs to be a healing all yeah. over the body when it comes to leadership, and I think. That that we we need to refocus our our um, attention, if you want to say it, as leaders on probably the most honorable person in the Bible who ain't got nothing but two scriptures. I think he got two verses, and it says, "And Enoch mm -hmm. walked with God, yes, and was not, because the Lord took him." You, you, yes. we, your, your life ought to be so honorable yes. that God ought to want to take you. I yes. believe that that's what's going to cause the rapture. Yes. When God, when Hallelujah. God, when the church looks like Enoch, and yes. when we, when we honor God enough to walk, yes. to walk with Him, yes, honor is not in your, um, honor is not in your, your exousia. That's because that's what that's what we're doing now. We think honor is, oh, we got to honor them because they're powerful. I'll, oftentimes, our honor prophet is even jaded. Yeah. We, we want to honor people who we want to be like, mm -hmm. and, and not in a godly way, but we want their power. Yes. One, of the, one of the things that I learned that, I, that even when you were teaching that I was looking at with Elijah and Elisha, Elisha had to serve and honor the man yes. because him serving and honor the man was going to take him to the next step when he walked in his office to honor the office because yeah. he was going to have to learn every office is given to you for you to honor man. Yes. My office as an apostle was given to me so that I can honor man or honor God's wife. Yeah. The office of the prophet, which we try to make yes. this main I don't think you mean. I don't, you've been smiling the whole time. 
but we we have made the office of the prophet the main point your finger set the church in order no 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 the, the office of the prophet the office of the apostle the evangelist the teacher is 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 an office that loves the bride yes yes and i'm praying that god thank you father i'm gonna get off i'm praying that god purge the church yes. from people that don't love his wife yes lord yes every you should leave the church feeling more loved by god yes. even if it's a rebuke i teach my church even in rebuke you should feel love yeah hallelujah to god oh hallelujah to god and god in all of his wisdom prophet god in all of his wisdom he loved her enough yes. not to let her birth nothing wrong yes. i believe that samuel was honorable because he got that bitterness out of her before yes. he put him in her yes. so that he wouldn't watch this grow up and when some didn't go his way yes. oh hallelujah yes. become bitter at eli yes because it because it was nothing but honor in him that's the only thing that could come out yes. Man, I love you. I appreciate you so, so, so very, very, very much. Um, thank you for the word. Amen. And uh, we're going to just, just release whatever you want to release in the last, um, we got 10 minutes in the last 10 minutes. If God has given you anything prophetically to release, and then you can pray for us. And then we will, we will go throughout all of our day. Yes. Um, one of the main things that's been on my heart, even in this teaching is, is for everybody. Um, but particularly uh, the men of God, the men of God, and and how uh, how we often have allowed so much bitterness, um, as was in the text, to come in to keep us from honoring uh, who God who has ordained for our life, from seeing right, and and if we would just return uh, uh, and truly truly come to a place of worship and a place where we're able to receive, one of the things that I believe we're lacking is is our worship life you just talked about it with enoch apostle with um how his name meant devotion mm -hmm. hello he mm -hmm. was devoted he walked with god and he was devoted to him until he was no more and i think there the reason a lot of the problems that we're seeing is that there's so much of us we have to come there's so much of us that we're our experience our opinions our views, whatever it is that we've allowed to seep in that has kept us from being in a position, and it's kind of been highlighted even as I've been teaching, is that in a position uh, uh, to submit to the poor. Mm. We need to be poured into. The men need to be poured into. We need we need uh, fathers in the faith, like you, Chief Apostle, who are pouring into us. And so I believe that there's many men, whoever uh, uh, may be hearing this at any point, men who who need to submit and honor, fear God enough, fear God enough uh, uh, to return and, and come to a true place of de devotion so that you can be taught by an honorable vessel, taught by somebody who has been in this longer than you, so that you can be who God has called you to be. I think many times we're walking in a whole nother identity than even what we are truly uh, uh, supposed to be and all of this confusion that we allow in to our lives and to our minds and how we function and operate is just plain off because we simply have not submitted to somebody to pour into us. And so my encouragement, my admonishment, my love for you, uh, uh, whoever's listening, is that us, all of us, um, would really submit to the pouring, the pouring that comes through men. And it's so true what, what our apostle said um, in regards to Hannah, how she could, because she couldn't see Elkanah right, because she didn't see him right, she was unable to receive from him. She was not honoring him. And, and so, and that lack of honor is also what kept her from being able to birth forth what she was supposed to, but God favored her so to allow her to get to a place she allowed, I believe, the Lord, he favored her so to allow Penina that night to vex her to that point, mm -hmm. to push her to go and pour all of that out. And so it, it, it's what uh, allowing God, God, I believe all of it, whatever position, situations that we're in, whatever we've experienced, but we're in this place, we're in this time, God is, it's been released uh, uh, from, from our chief apostle. We are in a time of restoration. We're in a time where God is redeeming the time. We've wasted too much time being bitter. Mm -hmm. 
and being unforgiving and unable to receive and not growing. All of those positions, those honorable positions uh, are given for the edification, the growth. It's time for us to mature. And the only way that I can mature into who God has called me to be is to submit to the poor, mm -hmm. to submit to my leader, to submit to the God in my leader. I expect my leader to have something for me. I honor that vessel. I honor the vessel that God has given unto me uh, uh, to grow me, to mature me into all that he's called me to be. So that would be my encouragement, my admonishment to us all. Do not let anything, anything. We have too many excuses. We make excuses for why we don't submit, why we don't honor, why we're not obedient to scripture because it's in the word. And so we make too many excuses. Let there be no excuse. Don't be like how Penina was in the, in the first part of the scripture where she had every excuse for why she was unable to receive and, 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 and why she was being vexed, why she was not going to eat. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. When you honor, you're able to eat, mm -hmm. to sup with. Wisdom is calling you. And so wisdom, it, it talks about that in Proverbs, how wisdom is calling you to dine with her. And so we need the wisdom that comes from our fathers. And so that would be my admonishment. So I'll, I'll pray out. Um, so God, I just thank you, Father. I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be able to speak unto your people. I thank you, Lord, for the honorable vessels, God, that you have placed, Lord, in our lives. God, that you have given unto us these, these offices, these positions, these, these honorable roles, God, that you have given for the edification of your church. I thank you, Lord, for this time of restoration. I thank you, Lord God, that you are restoring your people to a place, God, where we honor you and see you rightly. I thank you, Father, hallelujah, that you're restoring, God. Hallelujah, your name is good. Your name, hallelujah, is righteous. You, hallelujah, and I thank you, Father, that you are restoring your people to a place of seeing you rightly. Hallelujah, where we are able to honor your word and walk in the fullness, the truth of your word. I thank you for every person, hallelujah, that may be hearing this now and that shall hear this, Father. I thank you, Lord God, that you would continue to minister unto their heart and draw them unto you, Father, that they may be an honorable vessel. God, that they may be everything that you have called them and commissioned them to be, and that you may be glorified, Father. And Lord, I bless you and honor you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you all so much. Amen. For being on Prophet. Thank you so much, man. I love you so much. I appreciate y'all. Amen. We got, I think we got one more week um, talking about um, honor and my topic next month is going to be a rough one too, but it's necessary. I want to talk about what's necessary. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to talk about my sister will be with me next week on here. Amen. Praise the Lord. It will, my sister, co-pastor Hill will be here next month. We're going to talk about, you know, forgiveness, unforgiveness, reconciliation. That's going to be a good one. So y'all want to be with us on next month. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we approach these holiday seasons, we don't want to be eating turkey with people we can't stand. Amen. We want God. We want God to be in the midst of our fellowship. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I love you all. I thank you all so much for being on everybody that logged on. Prophet, we appreciate you. We love you so much. I hope y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you're in Southern California, come on by and see us. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have in church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are uh, West Coast Church. Having church like we down south. Amen. <laughs> so I love y'all so much. I appreciate y'all. I'll see you tonight at Bible study. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we'll see what the Lord say then. Amen. Grace and peace. Love y'all so much. Prophet, love you, man. Y'all have a great day. Yeah, you too.